Hello, everyone. This is Gary from TimelineAstrology.com. This is the forecast for December 2023. So let's get straight into it. And we look at the lunar phases, first of all, the major lunations, the new moon on the 12th and the full moon on the 27th. And all of the planets and transits around these major lunations. And then we can break down each one as we look at all the other transits. So this is the new moon on the 12th of December. It's at 26 degrees of sidereal Scorpio. Mars is not too far away, which rules Scorpio. This is a very Scorpio type of new moon and a new lunar month, therefore. So Scorpio and Mars is about finding strength within, and a new moon is very internalized anyway. So this is a real turning point in many ways for this reason. So we can get this sense of things turning around for us, maybe going to our darkest point in a way, maybe the dark night of the soul in many ways, but also even just maybe feeling that, okay, I've worn that out now in terms of that mental story, and maybe I can overcome that and get through this and find the strength within myself to dig deep and to do what I have to do to overcome this, whatever it is. This is what this lunar mansion, Jeshta, the very last lunar mansion in Scorpio, the tail of the scorpion, represents. It's ruled by Indra, the chief of the gods. It's all about finding that strength, finding that power again within us. And this whole story and myth around Indra always losing control and then gaining it back again is what this sign Scorpio is all about. We lose control. We spiral mentally we go there in a spiral we this downward spiral that we get into when the moon is in scorpio and then we pick ourselves back up again and we overcome it and we dig deep and get through it and then we end up in sagittarius as the moon moves into sagittarius so this newer newer month is very much about this journey of going to the darkest thinking about the worst case scenario and then hoping for the best from scorpio to sagittarius there's a lot going on in this lunar month, as there is every month, and we'll get into that now, including Mercury, which is about to station retrograde the day after this new moon. It's stationing at 14 degrees of sidereal Sagittarius. It will eventually move back into Scorpio, and actually, as it does so, it will meet with Mars, which moves out of Scorpio at the same time, and that will occur on December 27th, and that's the full moon opposite in Gemini. So there's a whole sort of two-week period after this new moon on the 12th of December and that culmination point on the 27th of December where things are kind of building into this kind of crescendo in a way. And because it's a Mercury retrograde back into Scorpio as Mars meets it, things are probably going to come to the surface. You know, it could be simply for you that you have a cross word with someone. It could be, could be that you have this conversation you need to have because you've been putting it off for a while. Whatever happens in a more internalized or more obvious external way or at large in the world around you, it's about finding the strength to deal with what needs to be dealt with emotionally in our own self and then say what needs to be said, but also being mindful of what we're saying, of course. We don't want to burn bridges and we don't want to say things that people misconstrue either because Mercury retrogrades can certainly show that potential. So being really mindful of this Mercury retrograde now for this new lunar month is a big part of this. And the full moon on the 27th in Mercury sign Gemini, sidereal Gemini, is activated in a big way by the end of the year. This is an important time for considering, again, how we're saying things, what we're saying, how we're communicating, how we're interacting with other people. By the end of the year, in fact, the end of December, we have Jupiter station direct in Aries, Mars is signed. So you can see there's a lot, a lot of Mars themes going on here. And it's doing so in a trine to, of course, Sagittarius, where the sun will move in and Mars will move in by the end of December. So this is looking more positive by the end of the month. Yes, there's the whole complication of Mercury retrograde. That doesn't station direct until January 2nd. But because of this trine between Jupiter and Mars and sun in Sagittarius, that seems to be a lot more buoyant. It seems to be a lot more hopeful, even if at times it might be delusional. And of course, that could be because of Rahu now in Pisces and together with 
Neptune and Pisces could lead to this kind of more delusional thinking. But at least even if we're deluding ourselves, it seems to be more hopeful. It seems to be a bit more buoyant, seems to be a bit more inspired and in taking inspired action. And as Jupiter stations by the 31st of December, this sense of, okay, I can move forward with this plan of action now and get on with this and feel more inspired by this. So that's the lunar month ahead. This is the full moon on the 27th I mentioned in Gemini. It's at 10 degrees of sidereal Gemini. The sun opposite, of course. Mars, you can see here, as I mentioned, it's about to move into Scorpio on the 27th. And then Mercury's about to move back retrograde into Scorpio. And so they both meet here right after this full moon on the 27th of December. So this is like a crescendo, I feel. This is like where things really come to a head. And also things I imagine will be resolved around this time as well. So that's all more positive. And again, in a trying to a sun, at least in a trying to Jupiter, that's feeling more positive, like really optimistic, or overly optimistic, perhaps, if anything, and maybe biting off more than we can chew. And we need to be mindful of doing that. But overall, I think it's more optimistic. Saturn, of course, is still there behind the scenes, always keeping everything in check. And I think that could also be a positive thing because it's not going to let Jupiter get out of hand. And that could also mean that, you know, situations on the global stage don't get out of hand, but also in our personal lives, we can just maybe restrain this kind of over, overly rambunctious sort of Jupiter trying sun energy for this full moon with the moon obviously opposite the Mercury retrograde. This is this is quite full on. Mars is aspecting the moon as well. Um, so yeah, a lot going on. And Venus has just moved into Scorpio by the 27th as well of December. And so a lot of passion and drive and energy and optimism and hope and idealism and delusion maybe as well, but a lot of focus as well with Saturn. So the potential here for making these big ideas happen into the new year, I think is there, absolutely. So that's the full moon on December 27th. So going through the transits individually, Venus is in Libra for most of the month until December 25th, actually. It moves in to Scorpio on the 25th of December. So for the month of December, there is more compromise that is possible because Venus and Libra is more balanced and you know it's all about equality and peace and harmony. And that is certainly already evident in the world in terms of Venus and Libra. However, it's also hemmed in between Mars and the Sun on one side and Ketu, which is moving into Virgo, the south node of the moon on the other. So Venus is kind of hemmed in here and sort of like between a rock and a hard place kind of thing. So it's almost like forced to compromise whether it wants to or not kind of thing. Venus, though, is also opposite Jupiter in Aries. And that's kind of like yeah, let's have some fun. Let's There's a tense situation here, so let's indulge. And that could ob obviously lead to overindulgence because of tensions, not merely because of the tensions of Mars combustion in Scorpio, but also Mars is square to Saturn in Aquarius. So we're seeing this kind of tense situation that continues into December, where again, we might kind of overindulge with Venus and Libra. But I mean, you know, you have to take the good with the bad here. And I think this is more, most definitely one of the more positive, more beneficial transits. The other thing that's happening is Neptune is stationing direct in Pisces. And it is going to receive by the end of December a square aspect from Mars as it moves into Sagittarius. And so we're really pushing ahead with ideas that, you know, again, might be somewhat diluted. But again, I would say, you know, what's diluted and what's actually just a dream that you can actually make a, a reality. You know, it, it really depends, obviously, on the individual. But we just need to be mindful of which is which, I guess, and making sure that we're not pushing through a plan that's just not going to happen ever. It's a fantasy, as opposed to pushing through an ideal situation that we're going we're gonna to make happen. And so both are potential, depending. Mars is also out of bounds, by the way, by the end of the month, as it moves into Sagittarius and squares Neptune. So it, is, it itself is behaving more erratically as it moves out of bounds and into the new year as it's moving through Sagittarius. It's like full on, full steam ahead. I'm feeling psyched. I'm feeling like charged with this new inspired, you know, belief in something. And you're likely going to really go for it, whether or not it's true or not. You know, it might not be even true, but it doesn't really matter because you're just feeling it and just going for it. So obviously it's just about being mindful of how you approach it. And, you know, if it's not true indeed, 
that you're you're going to run all of this energy out on something that's just a fantasy and thinking about that in terms of wasting all this energy that is there absolutely there's a lot of mars energy that is abundant right now but it's still erratic and all over the place also so Mars initially, like I said, is going to be in Scorpio until the 27th of December and then in Sagittarius. And this juncture between Scorpio and Sag, between the watery sign of Scorpio and the fiery Sagittarius is a very tricky juncture. And the fact that it's meeting with Mercury right on this juncture on the 27th is volatile. I mean, it absolutely is. I just don't think the last week of December is the optimal time for travel, for example. Mercury retrograde can join Mars in this juncture is likely to lead to all kinds of setbacks and delays and who knows what. And, you know, travel, business, everyday stuff gets impacted by this. So just be mindful around that 27th period, I would say. But overall, like I said, Mercury, Mars and Sun all in Sagittarius. And again, in a trine to Jupiter in Aries is more positive. And the fact that also Jupiter is exchanging signs with Mars is also more positive. And I think the thing to say about that is that Mars exchanging with Jupiter is, is really good for some signs and it's maybe more challenging for others, depending. Uh, but for all of us, I think we can use it to our advantage. When planets exchange signs, there's like this mutual exchange where they're you know, working with each other. And because Mars and Jupiter are said to be friendly with each other, when they swap places, they, they work together. Like I said, some signs might find this more challenging than others, but if you follow my channel, you can find out about each sign by sign as I do the sign forecast. So make sure that you subscribe and you follow and you can get that video as soon as it's out. But in a general way, I do think this is more positive. I mentioned the Mercury retrograde from December 13th to January 2nd. Again, it's just the typical Mercury retrograde scenarios that you have to be mindful of, but especially this one because it's moving between this watery, fiery, realms of Scorpio Sag it's definitely volatile and I think everyday you know and business related matters are likely to be backed up communication issues of course travel especially the fact that it is the Christmas New Year period and lots of people are going to be traveling I personally wouldn't like to travel the last week of the month even though of course like everybody is, and I'm going to have to, but I don't want to travel long distance or make it a really complicated journey. So I would say if you can, maybe put that off. And if you do have to, maybe just leave a lot of room either side for a wiggle room where you don't have to go back to work straight away or you don't mind getting a delay and then being stuck in an airport or having to book an extra night or whatever. All of these kinds of typical things. It could be weather related as well. You know, it might not be disruption for any other reason, but just to be mindful overall, I would say of this Mercury retrograde. And then again, the Jupiter Direct is the big story of December in many ways. You know, it is what's been holding us back in terms of our big inspired actions in Aries. And now it's going to station the last day of the year and start to move forward again in a trying to all these planets in Sagittarius. It just feels more hopeful moving into the new year. And again, even if some of those hopes or ideals are verging on fantasy and delusion, I mean, it still feels better. And I think that's something more positive. The last thing to say here is that the nodes of the moon have moved now. Whether you use the true node or mean node and the whole argument about which one you should use, all of that's out the window now because even though in November, it was quite a kind of difficult thing to ascertain, have they moved? Have they not? And I did a whole case study where I was getting messages from people who were saying, well, yeah, I could see it in this way that they have, but in this, this other way, then there's this other story going on. They haven't quite yet. So I would say, I would take from that, and I have always thought this, that it's both that you can use both the mean and the true node and they're both going to give you a different story. And this transition story essentially is what we experienced in November. In December, there's no more transition. It's like, well, it's still transition in a way, but it's, it's, they're moved in. They've moved into Pisces, Virgo. Rahu is now in Pisces, Ketu is in Virgo. This is a mixed bag, of course, because Rahu is now in Jupiter's sign, aspecting Jupiter and Aries. Saturn continues to aspect Jupiter and Aries. That, that's definitely going to impact growth in all sectors, but it's certainly, of course, the economy and, and all, all those things are impacted. In another way, it kind of, it takes out the unreal situations that have been going on in terms of the economy, in terms of the inflation kind of thing, in terms of stock market rallies and all of these things. Rahu tends to spike things 
artificially as well. It makes things really hyper and it's, but it's all unreal. It's not real. Um, you might say the markets are on a real situation. There's a disparity between markets and the economy, the wider economy. So this might be when that kind of stimulus is taken out or the kind of artificial, whatever is going on is taken away. And then Ketu and Virgo is highlighting that maybe this kind of this need to come down to earth and deal with practical issues and really deal with a lot of things that we might not want to deal with as well. And Virgo also, by the way, represents health issues. And so Ketu and Virgo could show some health issue coming up again in the world at large. And so we have to be really mindful of that and not run away from it. You know, Ketu, we tend to run away from. Rahu, we tend to run towards. So we just need to be mindful of overdoing either impulse and getting more of a balance right between our everyday stuff and our duties and not wanting to escape through some sort of any kind of escapist route. And so getting a balance between these two is doing what we can and then shutting off when we need to. So that's an ongoing theme that will be for the next year and a half. Finally, I just want to mention before I leave it that I have magazine is out now. I released it for patrons a few days ago on the 26th of November, I think it was. So if you are a patron, you would have got that. If you would like to sign up as a patron, you can get your hands on the magazine now and download it as a PDF or do the flip magazine where you can read it online. You can just sign up at patreon.com forward slash timeline astrology. You can also get a seven day free trial and then therefore you can just pick up the magazine free. So if you want to try that out, and also, if you're interested in a reading with me, I am offering readings. Um, I'm booked up until the end, I think now of January 2024, but you can go to timelineastrology.com and see if there's any slots there that suit. And yeah, that is the month of December 2023. Before I leave it, I just want to mention of this upcoming report, this presentation that I'm going to give in January. This is on Sunday. January 14th from 7 to 9 p.m. Universal Time. This is live for patrons, exclusive for patrons. So I'll also do separate sign-by-sign -sign videos, and that will be, again, exclusive for patrons, and it will then eventually be available for the public to purchase. But for patrons, you'll get your sign-by-sign -sign and also this live report on 2024. And so join me on Sunday 14th if you're a patron. If you're not, consider joining as a patron. Remember, it's patreon.com forward slash timeline astrology or just go to timelineastrology.com and you'll see the links okay everyone thanks for listening to this all the way through to the end and wishing you all the best for the month of december and i'll see you next time